be able to make a name for themselves. That's right. And uh, we have one of the players now that's going to go to BlizzCon who already has a big name for himself. This is the match of the day, guys. Make sure you get on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, every website you know about, and let people know. Get in here right now. This is the match of the tournament. This is something that could be the BlizzCon finals. It's so good. I believe it. I, believe well, it. I, I can't fact, believe that these I, two guys are I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. The player who wins this out of these two is the favorite to win the world championships this year. Wow. I wow. certainly wow. agree. This is, this is really strong. But uh, it's, uh, it's certainly true. Yeah. All right. Well, it's finally time. The last match. Who will claim the remaining spot for BlizzCon later this year? Colenso or Tice? Gentlemen, take it away. Thank you very much, Frodan. Here we go, guys. I am so stoked. Where they open with? It looks like it is going to be Priest oh. against Shaman. Tice open up with early lead. Colenso's. Ancestral yeah. Spirit. What am I looking at? Guys, talk to me. Ancestral wow. spirit. This is Colento, and um, Colento and Ties, both guys are deck builders. They are not afraid to bring new decks to the fold, and uh, we haven't seen this from Colento before. And Colento is just... on his team. You haven't seen this? I haven't seen this. <laughs> like, That's he's, awesome. <laughs> he just kept it uh, a secret, like uh, totally. And um, we we're talking about this before. Like Colento is streaming a lot. We felt that this is giving him a disadvantage because people can see his decks. Yeah. But um, he can use it against his opponents because he can actually play decks that he hasn't streamed. Like something totally new that unex unexpected. Okay, yeah. I, I have to say something real quick before you chime in, Savitz, before it leaves my mind because I don't always have really great ideas about this. But I want to say that this makes this matchup a lot better because Priest never runs more than one silence. And Ancestral Spirit, what do you... I mean, that's... That's something that you can put on something like a fire elemental. It's going to come right back. Yeah, potentially. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm, no, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm really excited to see this deck from Colento. I mean, he's a great deck builder, and uh, if he, I haven't seen the ancestral spirit uh, shaman work that well in the past. But if Colento brings it here, it does work. He wouldn't bring something yeah. that he's not comfortable playing with. But on the other side, guys, this matchup is pretty tough for Shaman anyway. And Ty's got his removal cards. He has the Pyromancer, he mm -hmm. has Circle of Healing, and Power Shield, which is pretty dreadful for the Shaman deck. Yeah, with these classes, uh, I, I would think that uh, Ty's is still like heavily favored, even though the Ancestral Spirit might uh, mix things up a little bit. Huh, well, you know, the, the shock factor definitely can play a role. Uh, that's that's something that we see in tournament play much more than the latter, you know, where one card different in your deck actually can just swing the game right in your favor when it's something a little bit crazy, like the Ancestral Spirit may end up being. Absolutely, and the, the unknown factor for Thais, he won't see it coming. Well, it's only one Ancestral spirit, spirit that we've seen. Maybe there is something else as well. Well, we also saw Cairn, and that's not something you usually put in your deck as a Shaman. So I would expect there to be something like a Sylvanas, and uh, we might even see it. Reincarnate? <laughs> could we see Reincarnate? We could see Baron Reincarnate. Rivender. We could see Baron Riven there. Wow. You never know. Wow, that would be just crazy. New meta game confirmed. Are we scrolling the reincarnate just the Baron <laughs> Rivendare, and then when he dies, I mean, what happens? That's like infinity Baron Rivendares, right? Like, I wish Colento just drew like ten cards right now, so we can see what's in there. I can't wait <laughs> to see. <laughs> All right. Well, both these guys obviously going to think a lot. I expect this to be a long match. I expect it to be a pretty close one overall, but uh, definitely, I, I think. You do have to hand the heads up to Tice with just the deck selection. And, you know, that is that is such a big part of it, is choosing the right deck to start with. Yeah, really good call here starting with the Priest. You think it, it was like, uh, wow, already has that Nerubian out. Yeah, it was an interesting... I, I mean, it was an obvious choice to play Flame to Totem, but Kalento still was thinking about other options because you will also play Feral Spirit, but then you are overloading yourself. So be able to remove um, that... Uh, Dark Cultist and then build up the board was a pretty a pretty good move. Mm. Well, looks like we may see him try to dig just a little bit here. Deal some damage with that pyro to get rid of these spiders at least. That clears the spiders easily. Ah. There is an Alcanai Soul Priest. That's a huge draw for the next it turn. It sure is. That's bad news for Colando. Yeah, especially if he does something like plays those Spirit Wolves. That, that oh, would, yeah, be huge. would be crushing. That's even better because right now this turn was like a statement. Hey, I don't have my Okenai and the Circle of Healing. And getting that Okenai for yeah. the next turn. Like Colento right now, 
can think, hey, there, there was no other answer for that. So I can overextend. Yeah, and I think that making a play like that's fine. It, he would have to have drawn it literally from that or on the next turn. That would be pretty lucky. Yeah. So you kind of discount that as a possibility sometimes. The thing is, I think here with a board like this, I, I, well, actually, this guy's at three health. I could see him doing something like Defender of Argus. Yeah, he could. I wouldn't be surprised at all. He could also just drop the inventor and maybe a trade. Okay. Not too bad. He does go with this uh, Priest. defender. Priest can often have a tough time dealing with uh, with low health minions. Something yeah. like a Holy Nova wouldn't actually do all that much in the end. It would only kill the Nerubian. It's mm. also pl pl playing around Shadow Madness at some point. Like Sh Shaman has such a hard time playing minions with only two attack. And the later it goes into the game, the worse it becomes. Absolutely. Well, uh, you think it's a clear here? It looks like he wants to. Yeah. Okay. That's we'll too threatening for him. But it's not that bad for Colento here, because yeah, right up, yeah. Priest did have to use the clear. Mm -hmm. And it's one clear out of the way, one Pyromancer is out of the way, and Priest only has four cards in hand. The Belzer is a really nice draw. Yeah. The, all the other options that he had would have just been uh, stolen away by the Cabal Shadow Priest. Well, it looks like... Uh, I would imagine he's going to go ahead and kill this off. Don't really see anything else he can do here. Maybe drop the... Uh, One of the blade monsters. Yeah. Build his board up a little bit at least. Yeah, I, I mean... I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think he needs to... Be, because he has two of those. If he only had one, I mean, if the situation was a bit different. But here I feel like he should be tr trying to put a little bit more pressure on Colento. So you don't think he should drop the, the blade master? He, he should. I think he should. Yeah. He should pressure Colento. Okay, yeah. One blade master. Yeah, one, one. And kill the kill the belcher after yeah. that. Yeah, okay. hero power that and trade in the orc and I then play one of the blade masters. Yeah, it makes sense. Also, that Northshire cleric is pretty important because if Colento is able to use ancestral spirit and cards like Karen, at some point he will be able to just spawn the board with minions. So if if this comes like in a couple of turns when Tice is out of cards and Colento is starting playing. Start starting to play those cards like Karen and Ancestral Spirit, then he might swing the game. I but yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I mean, like, but when you have a uh, Northshire Cleric, you, you, you at least have a chance to throw some cards to be able to draw into the answers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ty is a bit hesitant there. I, I think he was uh, scared of Fire Elemental. That that Blade Master would have yeah. been just the perfect target for it. But good for Ty, there is no Fire Elemental just yet. Well, Kalento on this turn has to decide what he wants to go ahead and do. I See his hand and sing it. Yeah. What do you like here? Like, he already used a board clear. Do you think that the the feral spirits and the manatee totem is fine? I think it's the strongest thing yeah. you yeah. can do. I agree. I like it. I do. And those go really well together. Well, do you steal the uh, manatee or do you steal a wolf coming up? I would be tempted to take the manatee. Yeah. But I mean, I wouldn't. Uh... If you don't, you're letting shaman just draw yeah, extra cards. I mean, yeah, I, I, I think he has to take the mana tide. You don't want to give someone cards. It's also interesting how many targets Kalantuna has on board that are possible targets for Cabal Shadow Priest. You know what? That's uh, true. If he didn't have this Lightning Storm in hand, this could be like kind of messy. If you kill a wolf and you steal the mana tide, he can't kill both the one health uh, four three or four one now, and the mana tide with what he has out there. So. Could have I, that would be another reason why I would really think about taking this mana tide. Yeah, it seems like he might want to go. I, I would be tempted to take the mana tide. It doesn't only draw you a card; it also denies one card from your opponent. Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of two cards in a way. Two card in the like the card. Absolutely. Battle. <laughs> I yeah, I really like it. Not just that; it's like he has to commit something into hitting it, which it, I mean, you're not looking to save your life till that doesn't matter, but. Perhaps one of your minions lives that wouldn't have that turn. Well, it's a choice between board position and card advantage. Yeah. yeah. And against the Shaman, board position is really important. So he is valuing board presence. But board. The, the, that mana that is going to be a huge problem. It I is. mean, he wow. doesn't have an answer for it next turn either. So not only did he miss on drawing one card, it Colento might be drawing two or even more from it. I guess he was betting that there is a lightning storm. Like, he did take his chance that no AoE is there mm. so that he can actually win the board with the minions he has. 
Well, as it is right now, this is pretty tough. Like, I, I like the position of this Shaman, even though I don't think that, for instance, Tice is out at all yet. He's completely fine. Not He's drawing yet. some extra cards mm -hmm. still. We've had some really good turns from Kalento. Well, looking at this board, Tice has a lot of drawing potential, and he has a 4-5. Hmm. And Colento only has, like, what, the one, one mana that I told him that can attack for two. So he needs to develop the board anyway. And there is the Ancestral Spirit, but... I feel like... <laughs> would you hex this 4-5 to try to keep your <laughs> mana tide alive? It's an option for sure. Then we, then he could also play the harvest column. He's a holy you know, it would be pretty. I think he will hex solid. it. By the way, you've seen Cabal Shadow Priest, so you know that one is out of the way. So now you're more safe to play the two two attack minions. Mm. Yeah. It's all about making good predictions and uh, making good calls based on the predictions you make. He does go ahead and hex that. As long as there's no holy Nova, it's not going to go terribly wrong. And, uh, all right, let's see. Gets a Sludge Belcher. Does have this Holy Fire that he could work with. And still, that Mana Tide, this is such a pain. Unless he Holy Fires it, that thing is here to stay. Thing is, he could, like, uh, attack into it, for instance, and use uh, a heal on the, the Northshire, draw two cards. And if he gets into uh, Holy Nova, that becomes fantastic. Absolutely. Like, he can, he can just wreck this board then. Oh, okay. That's not... I'm actually he just confused why he wouldn't just put a damage on the Mana Tide instead and then heal his own Northshire. Yeah. That would just be a better play. Mm. But he doesn't find anything with it no. anyways. So it, it, I, it probably won't end up mattering, but it seems to me like that would be a little bit better there. I'm for just Tice. shocked because every time we were watching Priest versus Shaman, it seems like Priest has an outer control and is just winning past turn six. And right now it's a stalemate. Yeah. I wouldn't say that Colento is actually winning, but uh, it, it's not like Tice is dominating this game. Oh, it's that's far rough. From it. Having to... Holy fire to mana tide. Yeah, that is definitely not something you wanted to target with that. Tides might really, Tides might be really uh, regretting the decision not to steal it earlier. It gave him so much trouble. Colento drew two cards. He missed on one throw, and he, in the end, he had to holy fire it. Five, <laughs> five damage on a zero, zero three, which already drew a couple yeah, of cards. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, Shaman is not supposed to have this many cards in hand against Priest at this point in the game, unless you're Cupcake and you're just sitting there trying to fatigue him. Not at all. I think this shows how how um, how favorable the matchup is for the Priest. Even, even with the mana that getting insane value, still the cards are somewhat even. Yeah, yeah. Well, he does have his double Northshire out, and he's drawn four cards off of them so far, so that's pretty good. Uh, it looks like he probably will end up losing one this game, though, unfortunately. And look at all this card draw out of Kalento. Yeah, he, he's running a lot of cards. He has a strong board. And right now, we are not looking at any possible clear from Dice with his Priest. Mm. No, I mean, the combos that he needs are Wild Pyro into maybe a Holy Nova and uh, something else, or just that, or, or can I in the circle? Uh, but he doesn't have even one piece of those combos. Yeah, he only has strong minions. He also has a Mind Control, but uh, I'm... Not sure if mind control is a good play in here. Like I would play double belcher maybe, or yeah, it's an option. He has to take some mm. risks at this point. Yeah, this is it's very rough. You know, having already used one of the combos, I guess it draws specifically into exactly the right thing here. There's like no good play at all. Like it's he can draw another card if he wants, but well, uh. double belcher is certainly not bad, I'd say. Sylvanas is okay. But Belcher and Dark Cultus is, is better, I feel. Mm. Like, you want to develop some kind of board to be able to, to trade and have good trades starting next turn. But how do you build it? You know, a lot of this... A lot of this, I think, goes back to not dealing without stealing the Mana Tide right away because he's kind of... Now he's got drawn so many cards, he's drawn other cards that draw cards. <laughs> or do you like cards? So I get you draw cards with your draw card. You know, like exhibit-type yeah. stuff going on here. And... Uh, you're forced to heal your opponent's totem. And by the way, Colento has three minions with four attack on board. How sick is that? That's wow. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow things like this work out for a player of his skill. 
It's like Colento is the only player to turn Shaman into an anti-priest deck. <laughs> yeah. Well, and all your cards have four attack, and they all draw you cards as well. I guess that's just good against priests. It's so slow. For sure. Double Undertaker. Like, if he wins with this Shaman deck, those Undertakers can do a lot of work um, in the future games. Yeah, absolutely. Can't wait until after this tournament we get all the deck lists. <laughs> <Me neither. laughs> I have to say. Try really them a ladder. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe tournaments too. <laughs> I feel like I would uh, for sure kill the Sludge Belcher and use this uh, Earth Shock with it, you know? Yeah. I, like I mean, using No Mission Inventor, which already drew you a card to do that, I would just feel so happy. Earth Shock maybe. Clear the rest. I like the Cleric. I like the, the uh, Dark Call this last. Mm. Seems like a good plan. Well, Priest gave you an information that, hey, I, I can't deal with your board. It's, it's tough. I, I, I better just play minions because the, that's the only thing I, I can do right now. So clearing those minions and just keeping your advantage is a pretty good idea, I'd say. Yeah, and even if you were to, like, have the combo in hand right now and remove this board, we still have a pretty decent hand from Clint. I mean, obviously, hand it's size. not quite as good. Yeah, the hand size is decent, but, yeah. I mean... He does have those Undertakers and uh, Holy Nova top deck. Wow. Definitely he had very to important. get it right now to have a chance at this. But now he does. Well, that'll just leave the 4-1 uh, Drake, it looks like. Yep, not too bad. It's so funny that Undertakers will actually get buffed by the Sludge Butcher. Yeah, no. With that Holy Nova draw, Thais still has a decent chance in this. Yeah. But uh, that's a good draw. Now he can play the Undertakers as three fours. Wow. Oh my god! Wow! <laughs> Top Undertaker into Harvest God into Sludge Belcher. That's pretty crazy. And then he's back to, I have to draw Akunai and Circle right now. <laughs> yeah. So I heard you clear my board. Try it again, and again, <laughs> and again. And that's why Undertaker is a, such a good card, because even in the, in the end game, you're able yeah. to play it as a pretty strong minion. Yeah, if you hold it. I mean, as long as you have one Death Rattle guy to play with it, he's not that bad. One mana for a 2-3. No, that's not at all. And one mana for a 3-4. That yeah. can grow well, next wow. turn again. It's pretty crazy. Especially in a deck like this that runs the Harvest Golems, that runs the Sludge Belchers. I'm not sure what else he has in here. But uh, even with just a few minions, you get one pump on an Undertaker, it's completely worth it. Okay, huh. he's deciding to, get for a to, to go for a totem. This is interesting. I think that should have caught Tyson off guard. We didn't see that when Quento played this last night against Fisho. I guess he figured that uh, he's unlikely to get much value out of that uh, Ancestral Spirit later, so mm. he just well, wanted to throw it here. He was able to establish the board. Yeah, yeah. It, just, it was a good play. Yeah, having a full health Drake, I mean, you can't complain too much about that. It is a four attack minion. It does have spell power, which is great for Shaman. Yep. And he, and he dealt with the Belcher. And it costs him only two mana to do, so it's like, that's pretty good value, I yeah, would say. It's kind of two mana, four, four. Yeah. With I spell power. I might be yeah. biased, but I think, like, this play was brilliant from the Shaman's perspective. Sometimes player, like, I, I'm often seeing players being stuck with the abilities and, and like, spells in hand that mm -hmm. are reactive, and the, you don't have the board. And here, Colento, instead of just playing the board with the obvious play, just, you know, dropping those Undertakers and stuff, he was able to use the cards that are useless if you don't have the board to establish the board, and he still has the follow up in, uh, in the car in the good cards in his hand. I completely agree. Mm. Saying that 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 card would have been so difficult to get the good use out of, and now he found found a good time to to get the decent value out of it. Well, this is why Clinto really is good. known as one of the very yeah. best players in the world. Really showing it here this entire weekend. Really, he's he's been one of these guys. Him and Frezar and uh, Tice, I feel like, have just played out of their minds well this this time. Absolutely. Really considering the Black Knight, I'm not surprised at all about this, to be honest. I think it feels like that uh, if, he, if he was to... Huh. I think it's just he needs a body on the board. The rest of his plays were, like, really suspect. Yeah, with, with the Sylvanas, he, he, would, he probably felt that if there's a Hex in Colento's hand, he would, he would fall too far behind. Yeah. But in the, in the Priest position there, I would have probably, instead of going for face with one, for one, I would have hit the Defender yeah. and then just heal up the slime. Because it feels like the, the damage to face is completely irrelevant yeah. at this point. And they have getting the one damage in on the defender 
The question could be is, more useful. The question is Savitz being the priest. What do you think your opponent has in hand? Like seeing Mind ancestral control. spirits. No, no, like being the being ties. Like, what would you expect uh, Kalenta to have after ancestral spirit? Oh. And oh, well, if you're playing ancestral spirit, you're probably playing reincarnates too, and a bloodlust. I've seen you on the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the ladder deaths. rank 17 shaman. <laughs> I, I would I would be expecting the cairn and I would be expecting more death rattles. We we already saw some of that stuff uh, come out, but uh, I, I would be thinking that there's there's a lot of death rattles in there. For sure Sylvanas, for sure cairn. I mean we haven't actually seen the Sylvanas, so it might not be there. I haven't seen the deck list, but I would expect it to be there. Just uh, abuse the rattle as a keyword. Hmm? Like abuse the rattle keyword. Like have yeah. as many the good the cards as possible. Yeah, oh, but only good ones, obviously. But uh, but I would expect there to be a lot. Oh, he steals an Alakir here. <laughs> wow, Hol golden halted creeper. But uh, can he? How can he get good value out of it? Well, right now he definitely can't. What he wanted to see with that saw steal was a uh, lightning storm. Yes, <laughs> not quite getting it though. Thing is, only one left in the deck, so pretty hard to fish that one out. Oh my God, that Karen will actually buff the Undertakers as well. How good is that card now? Wow. Wow. I have no time for well, he's going to go ahead and clean up this totem. I don't... Is there actually any merit in hitting the Sludge Belcher? I don't think so. I don't think so as well. I mean... No. No, it, it makes it too easy okay. for him to trade. How much damage is this? A lot. 5, 7, 9, 13. The six. You add as much damage with the Alakir as you do by just playing your other two minions. I believe that's 19 right now. Or close to that, at least. Well, the problem is his board will be just um, full. But I, I still Don't feel Don't worry, like stuff will eventually die. Like, this is not the Naxxramas quest where somehow there's all going to be one attack and you're done. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like you can still play double the Fragile Minions. And um, Saviz was talking about it before. Like, Priest doesn't have that many... Uh, or maybe it was Froden. Like there are not that many taunts. You know how many four no. attack minions he'd have out if he plays both those death rattles, and like half this stuff has death rattle. This is like uh. an impossible to clear board. And the thing is, most of these will have five health as well. So even Arcanized Circle doesn't even do anything. This board is just so. You strong. can't even pyro with that. Like it's just this is such an invincible board he's building. Colento has to expect the mind control, so he, I would be really surprised if there was a was an Alakir coming out. Oh, but he, wow! Uh, huh. So he's he might do some trades, maybe yeah. in that case. Okay, okay. Throw your uh, defender Vargas into him. And then just go face, I guess. Oh no! Oh wow! Oh, he is taking. Oh, he actually he roped, roped there. Didn't he, didn't he miss any attacks? I don't think so. I don't yeah, think he, he did. The last Undertaker missed the attack. Oh, okay. By the way, that Sylvanas death rattle. What a disappointment. For yeah, that's, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's just brutal. heartbreaking. Well, he has a 1-1 one -one totem. He can attack with it. <laughs> Thanks, Simsh. Colendo getting a bit roped there. I mean, he, he should have... If he was killing the Sylvanas, he should have went face with like the, most of this stuff. In case something like Alakir gets uh, controlled. Okay, we are yeah. hyping Colento a lot, but guys, he's just a normal guy, and he, this is his first tournament like That's on true. this scale. You're on a big stage. Like, look at this. Thais is actually turning it around. Yeah, he is. I mean, uh, the matchup is uh, Priest favored, but Colento built like this unbelievably unstoppable board, and it just got torn apart, even though he got the worst Sylvanas trade you could ever imagine. He's still completely in this game. Oh my god, oh. if he would just go face, it would be so much better with this Rogue Rider uh, top deck. Let's not forget that he missed uh, two damage. So if, if this ends up where Tice lives by two points of health, that's pretty rough. What I was saying, by the way, is that if you're at this uncomfortable spot, nervous, tired, you can be secure. Like, you're not even realizing the fact that you're playing safe. So instead of, like, going for face and then grabbing the win, like, oh, my God, I have to trade mm -hmm. the board because I might lose if, the, if I lose the board. So so people just naturally, they, they get more secure, and then they make support plays. Actually, do you know what? It, I was talking uh, to Admiral, and he was saying that the, the weakness of Clento, because he's like definitely one of the best players in the world, is he actually trades a bit too much. So what you're saying actually really strikes home with me here that, you know, he's like, well, I'm just going to trade, 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 trade. 
And in this case, uh, should he have gone to face a bit more instead of trade in everything? Like, what is Sylvanas really going to do if you have, like, these three attack taunt minions? Is she going to be at 5-2? Yeah, we can see that they're going for just dropping like a harvest golem, going for face, dropping at the harvest golem, dropping the care, and just going for face with everything would have been a stronger play. But if you call Ento, you might be a bit worried that there is already like one piece of the combo in Ty's hand, mm. and uh, and he draws the another one. That's it, the second one on the next go. Huh? Well, he does get a rock biter here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not really the greatest draw right now. Is he gonna double rock biter himself? Uh, Hero and the kill, I like here, and then go eight for face. I think he's gonna use one rock biter on the Undertaker, yeah. maybe to kill off that. And uh, you'd prefer the Undertaker one. over Karn? You'd rather have one four two Karn than? Uh, it depends. How much do you value the, the death rattle? I, mean, I don't know if he does right now. Like it, I'm sure it's really cool when he has uh, that ancestral spirit, but. He's already used it. We don't know that he has two of those in there. That's kind of a clunky card to play two of, right? Yeah, I, I don't know the rest of his deck, so yeah. it's actually really difficult to predict. Well, the thing what is, is he gonna use the rock fighter? The thing is, like, if he get if he gives Thais any opening, Thais will definitely use it. He is wow. really an experienced player. He knows how to Absolutely. play control decks. I think that was a really good play, by the way, just using his own life total, because yeah. you may as well just keep your board big here. They're both for attack. But he's got nothing left. If Tice can clear this, he can absolutely take this game. But he has almost no time now. Yeah, like Colento's life total is, uh, is like irrelevant right now. So I can understand using both rock by on himself instead of a minion. Well, what is just shocking to me is that he again has two minions with four attack. Like, how many four attack minions do you have in Shaman deck? It's supposed to have two attack minions all the time. <laughs> God, this hand by Tice has nothing it can do right now. Like. I think he's gonna Lothib heal himself and play the the little spider guy, like, or maybe the three two. I'm, there's just not a lot he can do. Yeah, I mean, so like a lightning bolt is really deadly. weak, but he has eleven, yeah. right? Yeah, lightning bolt is lethal, fire elemental is lethal, rock well, rock fighters yeah. were just used, but uh, wait, is flame it, dunk is it just lethal. it? Okay, it's no. Not. Well, that's not ten, <laughs> <laughs> but that allows yeah, him nice. to get rid of that one minion at least. He is in wow, he's trading. Wow. Uh, well, right. it leaves it at two health, I guess, but yeah, I'm really healing, surprised sorry. that trade. I feel like that should have gone face. Now we're going to see some wildfire stuff happen, I would imagine. This game is so close. If, like, if Colento loses it, if, if Thais is able to stabilize, that would be just insane. Pretty sure we're going to see a wild pirate thought still, and Tyson's going to be just hoping to get another spell. Yeah. If he can grab a hex. Whoa. That would be amazing. That would be so amazing. It would really swing the game in his favor. He can use the Shadow War Death on the... Oh! oh there it is! He can completely clear this. Oh my oh god. god. This what is happening? I he cannot believe he just got around. a hex. He is going to clear this whole board. He's going to heal himself oh. up. I cannot <laughs> believe this. Can't. This is so crazy. This is just an insane game. Oh, what a thought still I there. I cannot. Oh, my. That's, like, exactly what he needed. Look at this. He's even going to heal the pyro to keep it out. Oh. So he can be on totem duty and whatnot. This is... This game is crazy. Colenda's going to be devastated when he sees the Hex. This is the summit of Hearthstone. If Those he guys are just that, insane. If he didn't get the Hex, he would... If he got something else he, with the dot still, if he... Well, wow, so many bad cards he could have drawn, but instead he gets the perfect one. God, even that spider had its place, by the way. Yeah. And now Fire Elemental is Not just gonna get too late. Done. One just turn too late. It? Yeah. Remove it? <laughs> it's one maybe turn late. Oh my god, I can't even believe this game. That's just amazing. I, I, um, I think you Harrison heal. Yeah, I, I, if I was Thais here, Colento with zero, zero cards in his hand, I, I would be inclined to heal every turn here. Yeah. Because there is a possibility of a Ragnaros. Yeah. Like, he wants to escape Ragnaros' range. Yeah. yeah, the most damage he can draw in one turn would be eight with a Shaman deck. So... I mean, th there is the possibility of Doomhammer, and that would be pretty scary. Yeah, well... So oh, I God, I actually, I, you know what? <laughs> you okay, might keep the Harrison. Myself. Oh, God, I... The thing is, I'd want to heal so badly here, but I guess if you steal this, even if he draws Rag, it's yeah, only 33 you to hit you. Yeah, have a good chance yeah. to survive, Then there would be, yeah. be an Egg is too weak here, yeah, obviously. Yeah. you got to play one of these minions. You know what? No, no, no. Oh, God. 
Yeah. That's like, bravery, but you know what? I think maybe he's looking at the deck. He's saying there's no Doom Hammer in here. It's it's quite possible that Jukolento doesn't play it because he has to, so many of those Death Rattle stuff. So yeah. You have to cut something to fit all it in with the Unterestal Spirits and stuff. I think it's over, by the way. Like, I don't see a way for Colento to actually win this game yeah. right now. Yeah. If he has the Doom, oh, wow. Almost out of cards. He needs to heal every single turn from here. There's just not even a question. Take that Spell Power Totem. Attack, face, heal. By the way, I think there's like no Play way the to egg. <laughs> no way to activate the egg. A lightning storm. Well, Colento From needs Colento. a hack. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Colento kind of protects the board, I guess. Colento needs like to clear the board again and be able to. I don't know. Well, that's the hex. Hex is. So if he draws another removal, I mean, Tice has nothing to, to deal damage. Tice is just gonna run out of gas. Like even well, that he might have another minion in his deck though. Even it's possible. Death not winning this game. Colento might might actually win this in fatigue, and there's a taunt totem. You know what? Yeah, he's going to need two minions because but he, he can, can totem every turn and stuff. Yeah, but the taunt I think is irrelevant. I, I would expect us to see a silence on that, just to keep that and make sure yeah. that there won't be any more of those. That's oh. the last card, and this card is really That's good. That's a good one. That's a good one. But do you do you he heal can here? I think you activate the egg. I think you play the Orc and I, and you just hero power the Nerubian egg. Oh, I, mean, I like that. It, yeah, it's, that's it's really gonna smart. Be, it's going to be a 4-4. Four, four. I mean, Colenda would have... If he had a Lightning yeah, Storm... He, yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, he's a Lightning Storm, and he needs to hit the Spell Damage Totem to yeah, be able to... He's going to yeah. win in, like, ne not next turn, but in two turns he will win if he does that. Yeah. How did it come to this? Like, how, how And he has a Taunt Totem, so actually, like... Oh my and god. No, uh, no I, I, I'm pretty sure Tice is going to see the play and just activate the egg. And that way Colento won't get even use out of his urge. Oh no! Because now, now Colento sees that he, he can actually uh, earth shock that uh, Nerubian egg. And it cannot be activated anymore. Well, he can also earth shock. Yeah, okay. Oh. Ooh. This is one to last card. Colento yeah. has only one yeah, last we, card. Yeah, we in didn't his know how many cards Colento had. But I mean, he does have a Shadow Word mm. Death here still. Yeah, so it's still looking good for. Yeah, this ties. still doesn't do anything. He needed a Spell Power Totem to actually kill a minion with this, which would have been great. That to kill the Akanai with mm. that would have been amazing. He needed a Spell Power yeah, Totem. Yeah, then the egg would have been just dead then. Yeah, but now the Fire Element it, it doesn't kill anything, and uh, it's just gonna get the last Shadow Word Death. God, this game is so crazy. Guys, get out there and tell your friends. These are two of the best players in the world going at it with one of the wildest I'm Shaman so Priest games. I'm so hyped about this series. I mean, this, this is, is so just good. game one. It's really impressive like how, in contrast to the Cupcake and, uh, and Freezer game, where there was a Priest versus Shaman, they didn't do anything. Here, there's, this is an action-packed game. Yeah. Till the last card. They're going to fight anyway, but still. I think that Kalento doesn't play anything this turn. I think he tries to roll a Spell Power Totem next turn. <laughs> I actually, I mean, he knows only one shadow where death has been used. I like to oh, go in for right face. To face. Three damage, yeah. Okay. Okay. What this is, is going to be one fatigue. Those last card. There is the first fatigue damage. Yeah. What is the last card? The Rubian egg is the last card. Oh. Oh no. He can't do well, anything. Well, that's to not going to help. So he needs to, yeah, obviously use this. Thing is, if it's like, Tice could be thinking, oh, he might have lost track. Maybe he's like, oh, is it Doom Hammer or something? Because that would actually kill him, right? Just in time. Yeah, he can't heal himself right now with Dark and I on the board. Yeah. Also, there's the frog. He could the silence dogs. it though. He can silence it. Oh, that's true. He could. Would you silence it and heal? Or well, I think he's got a lot of counting he's got to do. Would you take out this one-one totem? Would you take out your egg? Would you silence your guy and heal? These are, I think these are all reasonable questions. Well, if you it heal yourself, you're back to nine. Yeah. And you can survive whatever you happens. You take two fatigue next turn. This Seven. is his first fatigue turn. So you died to Lava Burst. Right. But and you I wouldn't expect a Lava Burst from this deck. No. <laughs> I think I would just heal anyway. Whoa. And deal damage, yeah. Taking out the one one. Okay. I think that's alright. This leaves right. his taunt totem, and I would feel a little bit safer with this. Yeah. And the last card Some is cards. a Rubin Egg. Oh, no. Can you win with this? No. <laughs> wow! What that a game. was an insane, insane game. I cannot believe it.
Kalento put up the fiercest fight in Shaman versus Priest. I mean, we did see Cupcake actually win that match, but in a very different style. A kind of different Shaman deck. Very exciting stuff out of Kalento here, but somehow Tice stayed calm, did everything he needed to do. There were times where there's six powerful four attack minions on the board, or I guess there was like five four attack minions in like a totem. And Tice just sits there, he's like, no problem, no problem, I'll just sit here and I will figure it out, and he did. That game was utterly impressive. It looked hopeless for Tice at that, at that point of where the mana tide was not getting dealt with. He draw, Kolento was drawing two cards with it, and he was forced to holy fire a mana tide totem yeah. after it has already drawn two cards. Six mana, five damage on, on that card, it's like, what yeah. a disaster, and he had a really difficult I'm also clearing the board with That's all the death relevance. That's why I my iPad. There was a couple was of like, things because mm. Colento was really passive. Like he didn't want to go for face. He was really valuing the board position, just clearing the minions. If he would be a bit too, like more aggressive, he would just win the game because he was getting those rock biters. He was having the Alak here, and then he enabled Tice to actually like have this chance to clear the board. But uh, it's hard to say if this was a misplay. It was just uh, another approach to the game and. Uh, he was very close anyway. Yeah, it, that's, a, that's a game where it's a lot easier for us to say that they, he should be more aggressive. But uh, if you call into the like I mentioned during the game, there could have been uh, one part of the combo or some kind of AOE clear in Tice's hand, and uh, it could have turned out badly. That's, that, is, that is true. That Look is true. But I mean, hand, by the way. Well. Wow. <laughs> now, All right. Now so that's what you want to have against the What deck do you bring in against this Warlock deck when it kills you? <laughs> <laughs> because... Yeah, let's go to another match. Let's be realistic here. Tice winning this game is already almost impossible. A double Twilight Drake, Mountain Giant. We see, well, he has the Shadow of Death, but there's going to be a couple Drakes out there. He is running Silence. So I wouldn't say like the ties already lost, but uh, this opening is something you mm -hmm. really want being a headlock. Colento has Colento has three Twilight Drakes in his hand right now. <laughs> oh my God! How do you deal with this? It's pretty crazy. <laughs> Even if you kill the first one with the silence, which is not in Ty's hand, <laughs> no. There is. It's really hard to deal with the second one and then like face this. That is that is a fact. Uh, he did, and he he doesn't discard one of the the, the Drakes. No. He, he did lose Shadow It would be dumb to discard one of the Drakes. I mean. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you want to have them, right? Good yeah. call by Colanto. It's a very important card. Good call by Colanto here, soul firing the injured Blade yeah. Master. Well, it would let him dig towards yeah. things like Silence, and that's just something he can't have. That's like how Tice could possibly take this game. What's Tice I mean, actually reading Harrison Jones, like what it does? <laughs> I think he's bluffing a little bit, to be honest. We've seen this a little bit throughout the tournament. Some of the players like just pick up a card and look at it for a moment, even though it's not even something they can cast. So I don't know about you, but I definitely watch my opponent's hand so I can oh. get angry when the card they just drew killed me. I thought he was just enchanted with Carson's smile. It, I mean, he's a very handsome man. <laughs> or cartoon character in this case. And he has very good dental care, that's for sure. So, <laughs> Dice has kind of limited options here. <laughs> Yeah, he does. Uh, there, in fact, I would go as far as to say he can't cast anything in his hand right now. No. And healing does nothing. nothing at all. This oh. hurts. Heal the Drake. Oh, <laughs> you can heal for a, a principle. Okay, I guess it's... Um, well, do you cast Faceless or do you cast, just cast the second Twilight Drake here? Because you know that Faceless is just good. It fits the curve very well. With the faceless, yeah. Next yeah. turn he can uh, life tap and then top the third Drake. Yeah. But that's I, I really like facelessing the Twilight Drake in this matchup. It seems like if you have a triple Twilight Drake on the board against a pri priest, it's some kind of like an achievement unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> it should be. Yeah. Achievement unlocked. Priest breaks his keyboard. <laughs> No more rainbows. Cross, cross, cross dreams. Concede on <laughs> yeah. turn three. No <laughs> damage dealt. I. By the way, do you kill this one three? I think that you do. Yeah. Because yeah. if he top decks the silence, like it doesn't even matter. Oh yeah, you <laughs> you do kill it. It's like you're not concerned about like dealing four points of damage. It's all about just setting up the board here, and love that is also pretty nice. 
Do you agree with this, Savit? Uh, not necessarily. I feel like he could have uh, established Ooh. another Drake before playing the yeah. low tap. Because the low tap kind of it protects what you already have on the board. And uh, here he could have played more stuff before playing the low tap. Yeah. So I, I feel like he might have gotten more value out of the low tap a little bit later. The, in fact, the low tap, like, what are you preventing here? A silence? Well, you already killed the. The, I'm not the sure. cleric. Yeah. So it, I, I mean, that, I don't think the Lothar did anything except just make another minion. Maybe he's pl uh, playing around master spell. No, I don't think so. I think that he just saw every card in Tice's deck in the last game, and he knows there's no na master spell. <laughs> um, for this, by the way, if he hits that with the Twilight Drake, then suddenly there's a really great play for Tice next turn with sure the uh, Wild Pyro and Shadowward Death. Yeah, look at that. You can clear two of these. That's well, fantastic. If he gets a silence, it's even better. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that would be just insane. And actually, if it clears up uh, the the pyro, he can then holy fire the other one. So this is actually turned out. What? Oh, my god. Do you like this? That no. iron deal. Well, well, this is going to backfire. Um, yeah, no, I I would just... I mean, if you can remove two of these minions yeah. and set up removing the other because you have the pyro out, as long as he doesn't, like... Mortal Coil? Yeah, I mean, I kind of understand the logic behind this. He doesn't want to Shadow over Death that because he knows that there's four Giants in the yes. deck and he has to deal with the Giants. <laughs> so I don't think it's necessarily a mistake, but uh, it's like 13 Colen damage Colento board. has the perfect answers here. Mm. He can go Owl, he can Mortal Coil that after probably running the 4-1 Drake in. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a fantastic play there for Colento. I would expect the 4-1 to go there yeah. and take their Coil. They also drew a card. Farsi is nice. He said life taps. Just play a watcher here, perhaps. Yep. Or you can keep it just to make that mountain giant a little bit cheaper as well. Yeah, this game is tough for dice. Yeah, that's it's just so much damage on that board. He gets Okanai Soul Priest, but he doesn't have Circle of Healing, so the card is not that good at this point. He can steal an owl. Whoa, <laughs> good. that's a great play. Sadly, he doesn't get the battle cry from it when he steals it. So he could maybe... Is he going to do the Shadow over Death? He could also maybe Holy Fire the Lotus. Well, I right. guess like at this point he realized that there is no point in holding it. Yeah, probably. Well, he did use a Mortal Coil, so may as well heal yourself here. But Unfortunately, he a giant can just come out now. Look at his Tysis hand. It's so bad, like only yeah. six mana cards. And how can I? And on the other side of the board, I mean, Colendo with just about everything. I think he's going to kill this and play that Mountain Giant. I'm sure this game is really confusing for Colento. He, he would love to have the, the minion war, like trade those minions. But he can't. He just, well, he can kill this minion here. But, you know, like instead of... Colento doesn't like to go for face and just win for that. Look at this board right now. Wow. There is there is just nothing here for him. He Shut cannot up. even holdy fire it. I mean, concede looks like the best play. Yeah, concede is like pretty strong in this situation. But he could try to like fish for more information in case Colento like uh, shows some card which hasn't been played yet. But I, mm -hmm. I think Colento played plenty of matches with this deck already, so Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think Tice knows the list card by card. Also, if Colento is winning, Colento won't show anything that's, um, that has any value. Yeah. He'll just yeah, that's play the staple cards. Yeah, he's definitely one of these guys that won't make a mistake like that. No. But, you know, Tice not one to give up, just like that last game. That looked hopeless at times, but... And be in before Colento throws into Harrison Jones in a headlock mm. and just slams it on the board. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thing is, there's 15 damage here, and... In hand, he has... Yeah, he has five more. Does he have eight mana? Does he have... Yeah, he, yeah, has. he has eight. So that's... That. That's oh lethal right there. Siphon Soul. Let's see if he trades or goes lethal. I think he's going to go lethal. I think it's a better play. Yeah. Yeah, lethal is I a like, good play. I like going for lethal here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know he loves trading minions, but... but uh, uh, yeah. He, he likes winning more. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, winning is pretty good. All right, so, you know, that kind of went how we expected. The handlock crushes the priest. Tice didn't really have a chance. His hand was, it was pretty weak. Uh, Twilight Drake, no silence for the Twilight Drake. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. It's a tough matchup. How about right? two Twilight Drakes and also a Faceless and also a Giant? 
know, it's, low tech. Wow. it's all about counter decks, right? Like, you you have a good deck, then you bring a counter deck. And it's possible to win against a counter, because counter deck never has 100% win rate. But it's really tough. It's like if you have 70% or, or 80%, if you have those Twilight Drakes, it's really hard to lose with that mm. counter deck. Now, Tice has left Shaman and Paladin. Uh, of course, after this Warlock deck is defeated, there's going to be a Druid. Who do you go with? I like both of them. Shaman and Paladin. I think both are viable options. Yeah, yeah. I guess just maybe if it's whatever you're more comfortable with, I would imagine Shaman will be what he picks. I think that yeah. that's one of his favorite decks. I can't quite remember if there's uh, like a big game hunter in the Paladin deck, or maybe in, maybe in two, but uh, yeah. He goes so, for Shaman. Yep. Yeah. The Shaman, the Shaman thing is like if he gets the correct cards in the correct moments, uh, Airshock for the Twilight Drake, Hex for the Giant, uh, maybe spawn the board a bit with the small guys and has Flame Tongue Totem, which is a really important card. He might be able to just control the board, overextend a bit. Colen wow, Colento with the Ancient Water Iron Big Hollow. Definitely something you do against oh, wow. the Shaman. One of the best starts? This is what against you've the been Shaman, talking about. Absolutely the best start. Yeah, this is. You've talked about that a lot this weekend, uh, Yane, where you're saying this is how you beat the, shaman. The, the, the deck for real. Like, you, yeah. you have to get that out there. You have to be killing totems, taking control of that board early on. I wouldn't be surprised if he lifed up here. He can activate that later, and it doesn't. he doesn't need the four damage in. So mm -hmm. next turn he could like a mortal coil and then kill off something else with that. Yeah, yeah. But I, I really like, like getting it out early in case there was something uh, that he could kill easily. Well, would you silence the giant now instead of life tapping? I mean, no, no. It's just do you life tap, right? Well, this on next, next turn, turn, I next think turn. He's on next do turn, it. on next turn you silence and more. Yeah, this yeah. is activation now. Mortal coil, the one one, activate that. Yeah, it's so strong. And uh, Shaman will be overloaded next turn. Yeah, he can, uh, I mean, I guess he could rock biter it or something with his face, keep the wolf out. How important it is to silence it uh, opposed to like Sun Fury Protector? I think it's kind of important because there might be like a flame tongue coming out mm -hmm. and uh, something. Hmm. Well, I mean, there is overloaded. I mean, I mean, Rock Biter is a card that um, combined with a wolf can just kill the 4 5. And wow. Here. You know, maybe he's just waiting for Hellfire. Yeah, he does have that. He's not even using the Morpho. Oh, because he wants the. Um, he wants him to, to overextend. Okay. Well, uh, I mean, the Mortal Coil would be, like, pretty useful if he plays something coming up here. Uh, well, uh, the thing is, if he actually Hellfires this turn, then I guess the Mortal Coil was never going to do anything. But. Yeah. You can save it for later on. Thing is, Shaman does enough totems and stuff. You'll eventually have something for the Mortal Coil to hit, no matter what. Yeah. That's the Hellfire. The problem with this Hellfire is that it went one for one. It's like it only it only killed the, the Feral Spirit. Yeah. And they already dealt some damage as well. AO yeah. is really valuable against the Shaman. Mm. So, would you, uh, Krims, do you think he maybe used it too early? Did he ne did he need to use the AOE there? I would really prefer to use Silence before, like on turn three, just Moral Coil, Silence the Watcher, kill one of the, uh, of the Feral Spirit, because then you save the AoE, you, you establish the board, and you're in, the be in a better position. Mm. Do you like uh, Fire Elemental here on the 4-3? Yeah, but uh, seems like he's going for the Unbound Diamond. Mm. Well, we thought he can do the Lightning Bolt and the Rock Biter, so he actually gets to clear ah, more yeah. stuff off the table. So I, I think that's a good play, too. Yeah, and it only overloads him one, so he can just play the 6-5 next turn. Oh, OK. Oh. He's also playing around Siphon Soul, because if you just play Fire Elemental, kill something, uh, you just play into Siphon Soul. And yeah, that's true. The board is still good, still big. Leaving up the Farsia so he has a good target for the Fire Elemental next turn. I really like the, the line of play from Thais there. I think that was excellent. Do we just slam the giant? <laughs> slam the Life giant. Life giant. Or do you want to ir use Iron Beak on um, Unbound? Yeah, then there's a couple of plays. I don't like the Iron Beak on Unbound at all, to be honest, because it doesn't really change what your minions can do to it. I guess it would save your 3-3, your three, three, but there's a 1-2 spider out here. So I think if you want to kill the Unbound, just run these two minions in. 
I don't see like a ton of value from them. I guess you well, can use you one can, for a Shadow Flame. You can use Mortal Coil after that, so it's like a silence oh, down okay. bounce. Yeah, you that's keep right, the, the Mortal Coil. and Mortal Coil it. He has a lot of good options here. Oh my god. I guess you have to go with the Giants. Yeah, I like the Giant over the Drake because uh, because the, there's, there's obviously the Hexes for the Giants. There's the Chucks for the Twilight Drake, but Hex is 3 mana. So if there's like the, the one answer card in, the, in ah, his yeah. hand, then his turn will be kind of limited anyway. Okay, he loses uh, the one owl there. Uh, it's probably fine. For now, yeah. it's fine. It's like There's losing Siphon Soul will be probably worse. Against the Shaman, I mean, it's not a disaster to discard that. So now we have a Solidar Spider facing this 8 8 Giant and a 3 3 Farseer. <laughs> I mean, he could take him out, but I think he's going to hex. <laughs> Like hex rock biter, hero power, or maybe he could also like hex flame, oh, flame tongue and then kill off the mm. tree tree and then hex. Yeah, that's pretty nice. He already used his hellfire, so mm. he probably has two more AOEs in the deck. I think that this is one, uh, another one of those like uh, turns where uh, there's a lot of viable options. Mm. It's a cool thing about Shaman, by the way. Like you have so many cards that are like cheap cost and so many decisions to to have. Yeah. Also, like you influence your future turns with overloads. Yeah, it's definitely a very complex deck to play correctly. I do like this too. It gives him six points on the board to use. Sludge Butcher is always nice, by the way. Mm -hmm. He could mortal coil one of the one of the spiders too, so not to make mm. that trade with the belcher too easy. Don't you want to have a totem? Oh, I mean like you lifed up here. Hmm. Yeah, I mean you have that frog totem. It depends what he's gonna <laughs> the do. <frog> totem. <laughs> the frog you have totem. the frog totem out, uh, and so I mean it's not gonna be an easy trade with the belcher anyways. He'd have to use an extra card. Mm. So I think the, I actually like the life tap a bit. Well, I, this, in a way, is the life tap anyways. Draws one more card either way. I love having so fires against the Shaman because of Azure Drakes and those Unbound Elementals as well. Mm. Could even use it here. I think the Siphon Souls aren't really that important against Shaman anyways. Like, but if he discarded those. What about those. Twilight Drake? I mean, do you w want to wait till you see Airshock and then play Twilight Drake? I guess. That was an What's interesting turn the right there. Oh, the Belcher is lost. What, what do you think about that turn? Um, I was actually thinking that he would have played the Defender first, then killed the, the far off Spider, and uh, and that then after that Mortal Coil, the other Spider, the 3-1 Spider, and just leave up the Flame Tongue. But, uh, hmm. I, yeah, I mean, it, it was pretty good. I mean... Oh, uh, Molten Giant yeah. is pretty nice. Definitely. Well, you do Siphon Soul here. But, but having, uh, having, having the giant is going to be good for next turn. The huh? totem got frogged. <laughs> yeah, that could be pretty hard to deal with. He just hasn't been able to keep any sort of board out. Malatide is not bad as well. You're, you're shutting them down for mm -hmm. the removal cards. Manatide Second is, shock. Manatide is really nice here. Yeah, yeah. With Lothar, it's quite good. You don't want to leave it up, but uh, how do you deal with it then? Well, this turn you absolutely don't. Uh, especially <laughs> after it's, Lothab. It's not possible. I mean, he would have to live tap into <laughs> five mana soul fire or something. <laughs> and with double airship, he already like, used them both too. Twilight Drakes are just dead. Like they're non-existent. Yeah. Now this is one of those few times where the second Iron Beak Owl would have actually been really nice to have. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he will set up some taunts here. He is getting a little bit low on life, so you have to be careful about that. Especially since there's no Overlord coming next turn. You could always see a Rockbiter Alec here or something like that. Oh, yeah. he called it. This, wow. This, that's <laughs> that would have killed him. He would have died if he didn't wow. just taunt that. Wow, I was not expecting that, but I was like, oh, yeah, he's probably playing. He's still really tough. But not quite <laughs> just yet. Wait a minute. Can he just... Uh, he can deal 10. <laughs> yeah, he can deal 10. It, if he had 11 mana, he could, <laughs> he could, he kill, could kill him. He could, uh, he could double Urchuk and then go for the Rockbiter That's Alec pretty here. funny. Or he could put him down to 3 HP, but uh, again, yeah. not quite lethal. So it's super dangerous with double F-Shock and this um, Alaki Rogue Buyer combo. Yeah. Uh, 
Can you set up for lethal next turn, like, easily? I I think you roll a totem and see what you get, because with the Earth Shocks, you might be able to, with the Fenner of Argus, Earth Shock, and Spell Power Totem, you can maybe start to clear some stuff out, and then... Uh, you can probably use one Earth Shock just in case. Because next turn you will be playing Air Shock into I got like your Rogue Biter Air Shock. And you're also drawing one more card at the end of turn. Yeah, I like it. It's like setting up for lethal here. Yeah, I, I like uh, putting it on the Lotheb, uh, especially here. And I kind of like skipping the Mana Tide as well, to be honest. Like, trying to keep that out of the way. But by using this on, you can't like blow up your two three to kill Lotheb, so that's nice. Mm -hmm. And he does deal one more damage with the Mana Tide. What does it even mean? Like, if you attack your your opponent with Mana Tide, tell them for one. It it's means like that uh, if there's a life tap, then he would have lethal with the uh, Alaki Rock Fighter because that's twelve. It's the, it's like a mocker, <laughs> mockery. It's like <laughs> this Mana Tide is like I draw cards and I also like kill you with this. Mm. <laughs> Do you have to blow up your? Giant right now? No, no, no. You could play else? a Twilight and blow it up. Yeah, he could do that. Because then, I mean, you go to face for 10. That's pretty good. Well, you have to clear here. I, I would imagine. Be, I wouldn't be surprised to see something like a low tap either. I think that, I, I think like that air oh. shock, air shock into Molten Giant was like a statement that you actually have lethal because you're just being yeah. thoughts and trying to push with damage. That's actually, that's a very good point. That Lotheb is definitely going to mess him up. Oh, oh my okay. god. That Lotheb. I can't even believe that. If he played the Twilight Drake and was used the Side of Flame on that one instead, he would have lost the game. Okay, so... The thing is, he's going to set up Taunts next turn. Oh, this is... What a terrible situation. He wants to roll a Taunt on him. And he gets it. He gets it. He gets the Taunts. Is, huh. he is he just going for face here? This might come back to haunt him. Oh my god, this is, this is super risky. He doesn't yeah. get the double, double value from the rock fighters anymore. God. There's like oh. Siphon Soul and a taunt coming next turn. This is huge. Yeah, yeah. Oh no. I think that this is sealed of the deal here for, for Tice. No, I, I I think there's a Doomhammer somewhere in there. We just saw the whole deck and... Oh, oh wait. No, 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 that no, was, no, 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 was Kalentos. Yeah, that, that was Kalentos. Tice might actually be playing at Umhar. Yeah, think, he definitely could yeah, be. Yeah, I, I think Tice, Tice is playing it. But he needs to draw it soon. To really soon. And if there's multiple taunts coming up, then the Urchuk won't be enough to get through all of them. So here, definitely Siphon Soul Alak here. I think so. I think you want to heal. And then you... I feel like he's going to play the... Is he going to play the Twilight Trick this turn? I... I think I would love to taunt. He could also like uh, just kill it with the giant and drop a Drake and uh, yeah, and the Sun Fury. Because he he saw an Earth Shock used it like two turns ago. He doesn't necessarily have his second one yet. Yeah. And if he does, even I mean, at least that gets rid of one of your taunts right there instead of like at the last second when he's killing you. There's quite a few options. Oh okay. I think Tice can't actually even be too upset with that. That, that can't be too surprising for him. I have a feeling there's a doom hammer coming up. Oh, oh That's still a lot of damage. Come on. If you roll a spell damage totem, that's 10 points of damage just like there. Yeah, but he's got 14 life. <laughs> there's a giant out. Oh, man. Oh, that, that was a taunt totem. totem. <laughs> <laughs> taunt totem would have been like a 0-8 in a way. Oh, this giant will just go for face. Yeah. Ana another giant. Well, I think you would you. S yep. I guess you can taunt him, and it then play the. Yeah, yeah, I would expect the taunt. You can also double sludge butcher, and that's it. It's like attack with the giant, double sludge butcher. Wouldn't pass. you rather yeah. have two giants though, with taunt? You can. I mean, double sludge butcher is super safe. Yeah, it sure is. A double giant <laughs> with one is also good. I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Not bad. Oh my god. No, what can Dice even draw in him? Oh, oh my, oh my god. god. This is one turn oh, too late. That is brutal. That's Dice. so 
so disappointed. Oh, if it only threw that one turn earlier. He knows. No, there's nothing he can do. God. He can still play a double rock biter that and a Saki so Giant. He, he can kill one of the giants with the Doomhammer now. Oh. Okay. Sudoku. Yeah. And the giant is dead, so. Oh my god, that game. He was so <laughs> close. Yeah, yeah, and that was so close so many times there. I, could he have done it a bit different? Because you, know, you were saying, and I thought it was a good point, that he was broadcasting that he was setting up for lethal when he earth shocked uh, the giant. Could he have done something else there to. I feel like maybe playing Alakir was just um, too soon. It's like, just keep Alakir with a rock better. Because yeah. when you're playing Alakir and just going for phase, um, you are broadcasting that you have possible lethal when you're silencing the giant. Yeah. But then if you're playing Alakir, you're just giving too much information. It's like, yeah, I'm just going for it. I have something to kill you next turn. So you're just giving out away the tools where if you keep Alakir with a rock better, you're not really giving information how much damage do you have in your head. So I feel like silencing the giant and going uh, face with the mana totem was OK. Mm -hmm. But then playing Galakir, like even without anything, I would just throw them up and maybe pass and, um, and try to play yeah. it next turn. Yeah, it, it was a bit weird that he chose to play the Alakir like that. I mean, with the Rock Biter already in his hand and the opponent low. Mm. I mean, um, why? I, he took I, I a didn't gamble. quite understand. I mean, mm. he just took a gamble that there is no taunt. And sometimes people are not playing taunt givers. They are yeah. just playing, for example, like double um, Sun Fury and double Belcher. So they, they're not playing Defender Vargas. Yeah, that's true. A lot of decks have that nowadays. So, uh, Well, we'll see how this goes for him. He's going into Paladin. This is Tice's last deck. If he loses here, he is out, and Colento goes on to BlizzCon. But. Paladin definitely has what it takes to take out Handlock, and it definitely has what it takes to take out Druid as well. Uh, even a kind of wacky Druid like what Kalento's playing, it, Tice has chances here. And that hand is not that impressive. <laughs> it's uh, certainly not impressive. When you're playing not this matchup, you want to get the Twilight Drakes, you want to get Mountain Giants. Mm -hmm. I forget if Tice is playing a BGH. Cause yeah, I remember he's playing like double Senge and he has some like a nod towards more aggressive decks early on. Oh my god, huh. Artosis, do you see this? The third card, he lied. He is actually playing Equalities. Oh my god. That's the first time he's drawn an Equality in this tournament, <laughs> which is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that Equality definitely gonna be important at some point. Yeah. He's got a Shade there as well. Well, what Kalento has to do is just to build a small board that's threatening mm -hmm. to just bait out the removal. If, uh, if you are in a position where you have to unload the Giants, like just play them uh, and play into equality, you're in a bad spot. But if you're able to just stabilize with the Ancient Watcher that has to be removed, you might be in a good position to actually like, bait out the removal and then secure cards. Mountain Giant, a pretty good card to get. Yeah, that's a strong draw right there. He can play that next turn. Oh! Yeah. Wow, well, that's kind of strong, too. What a draw. <laughs> and look at this. He has a silence in hand, too, just to point that out. He has everything. He has everything he yeah, needs. I, I love this. This is looking great for him. I was, would actually... I would I would not mind Ascension here. You have or a true deal silver. with everything already. Yeah, either one would be totally fine. Well, I guess, I mean, if he was to play the true silver, he would sacrifice the dude, and if it's going to be a Twilight trick, then the 4-1 will be a little bit problematic. Yeah. I like Senjin. Senjin feels a bit better. Yeah. Also, if you are having a shit of Astramas, you want to have a, a, a taunt to be able to protect it if you decide to attack. Yeah. Oh my god, that giant will be... Yeah, he's going to be very sad after this next turn. If he ends up playing it, that is. A Hellfire. He, he's thinking of Hellfire, yeah. That's a sick play. God, Quento's very good at this game, isn't he? Yeah. Newsflash. Newsflash, guys. Quento is all right. <laughs> uh, I think here is a true silver and just kill this 4 2. Yeah, I agree. I don't want to leave him out there. I mean, and you have stuff to kill everything else, so whatever. You're not going to play a Coda. You're not going to play a Spellbreaker. You're not going to play the big game hunter. You're probably not going to quality here either. I don't mm, think yeah. you need to reduce right. that to one health. For You're two. not playing the Coda because you don't want to waste your removal. Yeah. <laughs> well, he puts a little bit of pressure on still. Clean, keeping that board clean is important. You don't want him to have an easy Shadow Flame on you if you start to build up. You actually want to force the Molten Giants. He has, but on the other hand, Tice has equality, but he doesn't have a, a trigger. Like, he has a minion board. 
eats uh, either some dudes or like a consecration or, or a pyromancer. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, he has something to take out a Twilight Drake or a giant right now uh, because he has a Spellbreaker and he has a big game hunter. So he has time to make dudes because no matter what gets played here, he can kill it and make a dude. So yeah. that works out well with the the quality in his hand. But oh, he gets consecration. consecration. Oh my god! I feel like Thais might have everything he needs to to take this game. Yeah, this is looking fantastic. Look at that! Already down to 13 health. Kalento. He's on the ropes. Well, there is Ancient Watcher plus Shadow Flame, if I see correctly. Yeah. He's not up at that much man. Oh, yeah, oh, he, he is. is. Sorry. Six man in this turn. He has to do it. And BGH is out of the way, so the Molten Giant will be pretty cool in a turn or two. Yeah. He absolutely has to do it. He has to go for the Watcher Shadow Flame. Yeah, well, it's like 12 points of damage you can see. Plus, I guess, guess Siphon Soul on the Big Game Hunter would also keep him alive, but I, I mean. There's other stuff to yeah. for the Siphon later. Uh, it definitely seems like he has a Shadow Flame here. Well done there. And now the damage starts over for Paladin. <laughs> <laughs> the game can go quite long from here. It's so funny it's how this Reset. Yeah. yeah. It's a life gain spell. Not really useful. In fact, not useful at so all. Do you, do I don't like dropping anything here. I like Dude Pass. It's terrible. Can, can that you drop a Kodo? It's really weak. Do you know that Kodo is actually a Cleft Hoof? It's not a Kodo. It's a, yeah. It is a, it's a stampeding coda. <laughs> it's a beast. It's a beast card. Too. Okay, he does play the Kodo. This is, you know, it's a combo that you sometimes use to kill giants, but I guess when he's in a lead like this, at least he builds his board a little bit to push forward. I like it. I, I want to, oh my god, a second Molten Giant. Wow. But you don't play both of them, for no, sure. No, I think one at a time. Just because of the equality possibility. Yeah. He has eight damage on board that he can nail one with. I would love to play Sludge Butcher and a Molten Giant at the same time, but uh, there's not just not enough mana. Yeah, he's one short from that. You know what? I, I feel like Colento is in a good spot, by the way. His hand is really strong. It's like he, he has the cards to beta removal, like cards that has to be answered, and then he has Jaraxxus. And so if he survives till Jaraxxus comes to, to to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He will just start spawning those infernals, and there's just not enough removal to. And with through. with eight points on board and the equality combo in hand, if he does drop a like one giant, I could, I could see Tice like maybe thinking about pushing for damage and being like, okay, clean this up with your giant, mm -hmm. uh, or commit another giant, make taunts or something like that. But uh, if he did that and he does live to that turn nine plays Draxus, then he's just gonna win the game. Right now, Thais doesn't have that much pressure in his hand. It's, it seems like he has a lot of removal, but he, otherwise, he's, his hand is pretty passive. He's oh, really man. thinking if he, whether to play the Belchers or the Giants. Yeah, I can't really blame him for this one here. Stampeding Cleft too. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's why it's called the Kodo. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, no. <laughs> he should start spamming well met, by the way. I like I like the the good play well played on myself and then thank you on myself. That's whenever I kill minions and stuff. <laughs> or you attack with a weapon and they're like a well played. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> or thank you. All right, keeping a decent amount of damage out here. And double Kodo with that five health, a little bit hard to get rid of with your AOE. You have to play a special type of minion. For sure. And I think this turn, like, he's going to have to at least taunt. Imagine yeah. if he... Does he play Black Knight in this Paladin deck? Well, probably. Do you really have imagine. to taunt? Like, how much health does he have? Eight. 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 Yeah, so it, if he clears the board with oh, okay, yeah, Shadow Flame and Molten... Uh -huh. Paladin does not have Burst. No, not that much. I mean, best thing you can have to end the game is, like, a true silver. Because that's four direct damage. But what else do you have for he's, direct He's again one mana short because he could uh, drop Molten Giant, faceless it, and then use one for Shadow Flame. <laughs> that would be nice. You could drop two Molten Giants and just use one for Shadow Flame. Oh, you certainly can. Yeah. Looks like that will be the choice here. Really nice play. That's the Shadow Flame. Being very careful about his life total right yep. now. He's confident with 8 HP. KT comes up. KT on empty board is yeah. not that good. No. Do you think he plays Sylvanas here? 
no, nothing else seems nothing else seems good. To, yeah, you can't equality here. The thing is, the Siphon Soul is just going to come out. He's going to take eight. That's like... That Iron Vigal is just going to be amazing here. Yeah, it yeah. sure is. Yeah. If he draws Soul Fire, he might also go Jaraxxus, oh. but... Uh, no. He even gets a Moral Coil to protect the Iron Beak Owl. To kill the <laughs> dude! <laughs> it's amazing! What a wow, draw! What, what a, a top, top deck! deck. <laughs> well, every time you start amazing. a turn with killing a dude, it's a good, uh, yeah. it's a good turn. That's, you gotta keep those dudes under control. So the dude is dead. Well, silence the Sylvanas. That's two points of mana. He still has six yeah. left. And, and you can Siphon Soul. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's seems perfect. perfect. So it, it, like you just have to do it, and this might just force the Equality combo. Oh, oh my so God! Standing. I'm actually a bit surprised, but I. It's probably I'm really gonna work out all right. I mean, yeah, I like, think you're right. It's not. That been it's not bad because if you just leave one giant on the board. Any Alder <gasps> Peacekeeper is just he our deals humility. Six damage. Yeah, yeah, but uh, oh Thais, Thais knows that there might be a Taraxxus coming. But Only is he desperate? Is he desperate enough to just go for it anyway and risk it and try to go for face? Equality consecration through Silver Face really seems like a good play. Yeah, but Taraxxus. Oh God. Man. Well, there is only one Taraxxus in the deck. You just check how many cards your opponent has left and then you make a call and he, he will I probably think he go has for it. to go for it well he did play ah here in that spot so yeah. i don't see him not doing it right now he's looking at kolendos deck how many cards he has left and there was 12. i think he's gonna just take his chance and hope that there's no direct also you have a sign you think he might head. just Come on. kill the, the one of the giants with the sword is there like because he has a holy light in hand oh he's no. going for a dude okay, play he's, he's going for it why do we play dude Huh. Did he like miscount mana? Wow, bringing himself up to 30 right now. He wants him to commit even heavier. Mm -hmm. This that, is that a Draxxus play. Two giants, <laughs> not enough. <laughs> is that, is it greedy? <laughs> oh my god. god, he needs to kill that dude. Oh, that dude's oh, gone down. That look on the ice face, I said. <laughs> it all. I mean, yeah. This he might be it, man. He did not want to see the Draxxus. He knew that he had to win, unless that was... Late. Yeah, and right now he's forced to do equality consecration, which is six points of mana. Even after attacking the Draxus, he knows that it might be tough. If Colento has any tone givers, and Colento certainly has a lot of tone givers, he has a ton, he has a heal, two so heal cards. Two heal cards and an endless way of taunts. Colento mm. has everything to win this game right now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he I mean, certainly does. Okay, you miss the silence. Like, if there is a Tyrion, oh my god, there is does a Tyrion. Does he take that risk? I mean,. To just Tyrion. He dies Tyrion, if he Tyrion, does. Yeah. But <laughs> Tyrion will be silenced. Then. Uh, I mean, it's going to be so. siphoned and. Uh, yeah. It looks and like he uh, just wants to take the risk, and oh yeah. I actually can't he has really blame him. Yeah. Is that it? It's like Tyrion. He, he plays with the game, so. Uh, the game is over either way, really. This hand is too good for Clento. I mean, what if he clears here and. Uh, like, he called the consecration and. Plays it next know. turn? Or? But if this Tyrion comes down, Clento is going to please go. Are you telling me that Thais had two counter decks to handlock and still he wasn't able to just go yes. for Colento? I was saying it before. If you are able to choose, do you want to face Colento or do you want to face Jaraxxus? Who do you pick? That is Colento, every time. Wow. What? Imagine <laughs> facing Colento Whoa. and Jaraxxus at the same time. Oh, this is like oh nice, my, man. here it is. Um, it looks like we have our last wow. BlizzCon player. It's going to be Colento. On the back of his handlock deck. Yeah, Mr. Hearthstone himself taking out Ice. Before the match, match that was, too. Be before the match, Colento was saying that handlock is a deck that can be in decks with even big game hunters, maybe even two big game hunters. And uh, there's, there's no real uh, good counter to it. And I'm not surprised to see him first ban Ice's handlock and then just uh, <laughs> use his phone like this. Yeah, uh, it really it delivered for him. So Colento will be going to Blizzard. Unfortunately for Tice, his journey ends here. Very well played by him, though, I have to say. And I even agree with, you know, that Tyrion play. Like, he has to do something. He has, he's trying to win, not what just to stay alive. amazing series by both players. Like, Tice played really well. He took the risks. It didn't pay off, but the plays were really good. He did get his Doomhammer one turn too late. Uh. He was so short. 
uh, from winning the, the games. And um, amazing to play. Like the, the first game, Priest versus Shaman, was fantastic. It's like yeah. phenomenal game. One of the best games I've seen today in, 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 in like my Harrison career. Yeah, absolutely. Frodan, what do you what do you have to say about that? I mean, that's pretty much what I wanted to say. Nimsh was taking my spot right there. But uh, I think it's a it's, it's worth re mentioning that I think these two players gave a hell of a series. And even though it's three one, I think it wasn't indicative of how close uh, closely contested it was. Um, de definitely got to tip my cap to Colento because I predicted that he'd be able to do it. And like you said, uh, I think the guy who wins this is one of the heavy favorites going into BlizzCon because he represents Europe and uh, these for good reason as well. I do believe we're getting ready for a winner's interview to see how Colento is doing. He did have one of the latest matches last night, but it didn't seem to stop his great Hearthstone play. Rachel is waiting with Colento. Let's hear from the winner. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Colento, an amazing series of matches. The first one, a little bit scary. What was going through your head there? Because that looked like a surefire win for you. Hmm. First of all, I had like really fast sensitivity, and uh, I wasn't. Um, I didn't manage to make my turn in time. But yes, I did a mistake that in one turn, and I think it cost me the game. Game three. This. Uh, or, sorry. This last one that you won was also a little scary. Did you at any point feel like you weren't going to win? Because the rest of us were a little nervous for you. Oh, I know Tide's decks, and I was like uh, a bit surprised that he chose Shaman over Paladin against my handlock. He's playing BGH and Paladin, and I was thinking that this is such a good matchup for him. But it turned out that I won, and it's great. It did turn out that you won. All that confidence he had in the beginning was for naught. Is there anything you want to say to the fans out there who have gathered to watch you? Uh, keep watching me. Keep watching them, guys. Remember, if you want to watch more Hearthstone next weekend in New York City at the Hammerstein Ballroom, E is the fifth and sixth. We're going to have the North American qualifiers for Hearthstone Road to BlizzCon. This is Colento. He is your final qualifier from the EU Road to BlizzCon. We're going to give it back to the studio, and then we're going to be back with some StarCraft II.